my cat. Hmm. Oh, I've been in a fight. Got his ears scratched. Blood in his ears. You poor cat. Gotta keep out of trouble, cat. Hi, other cat. Doesn't want to do it this time. There you go, should do it again. Oh, so cute. Long hair. Oh. Cute cat. Did I have yours? Oh, I don't know. All tops here, one of these. A non destructive one. Because some people have asked. How do these older mechanical um, speedometers work? Well, basically, there's an inner clutch, there's an inner center with a magnet, and as that spins, eddy currents build up and just acts as the main actuator for this needle here. This was out of that Diazzi Handy van, I did videos on while back, a while ago. Uh, yeah, basically, we just use that car for parts now, it's not going to drive again. We're taking the back axle out of it and use it for a trailer. It's a two-cylinder, 617cc engine. It does 120 flat. 981 Diazzi Handy Van. Which is later called a Handy, which is now called a Charade, I think. Or a Mile, one of the two. Got your battery warning light, lights. Temperature gauge and fuel gauge. Pretty basic stuff. Got your lights, the warning lights, dash cluster lights. 7 volt ignition, earth, your fuel gauge there. Temperature and the 7 volt signal to that to these gauges. And there's a drive for the uh, odometer and the speedometer. There's a gear that drives that. Kind of like your electric meters have. So I'll carefully pull it apart and show you how it works. So I'll get the VA and Commodore one out and pull it apart also and show you the difference between the modern and these older ones. Okay, if yours are carefully pulled apart. Start off with this interesting one, the old mechanical, mechanically driven one. Basically all they are, get some bloody light in this place. The cable drives this and spins this around, which is a magnet. And that attracts a little armature in the middle, which is uh, this needle pointer is attached to. Behind this copper ring here, with a spring attached to it to zero it off. As that turns, that builds up eddy currents and that works out to move the needle here at the right uh, speed, so 20 k's an hour. And it also drives this uh, worm drive, which drives this little big worm drive here, drives your read out how much k's the car, uh, the odometer itself. Only a small car, only has a four digits and the one tenth ones there, the little white ones. So the car's done 34,776. And it's 981, so it's probably about 30 year life. So it hasn't done much case, but it's only a small 23 horsepower engine. So, as you can see, it's pretty interesting how these old ones worked. That just spins, and yeah, eddy currents do the rest. Moves that. There's a stopper internally, makes it go almost, almost all the way around. And it's got 637 revs equals one kilometer. And it's got Daiichi logo and Nippon Denso, which are made all this Japanese car stuff. As you can see there. Independently driven. Magnet drives a stationary uh, armature in there and moves that. Pretty simple. Bit bloody dark, oh well. It is late in the afternoon. Here's the electronic one. This is something different. Instead of a mechanical cable that drives it, so what you've got here, this is just uh, one of our tractor. Got a bit old and tired, and they started skipping and making a needle in the. Uh, uh, I don't want to fluctuate like crazy, because as these get older, 
the lure out in the next spin as easily. You should probably hear that. Doesn't sound too good. It's being cleaned and flushed and filled it with oil and cleaned it and it hasn't helped. Yeah. In that case, a little uh, worm drive in the little gear inside your gearbox and converts the uh, motion of your car under the kilometers an hour it's doing. So it's pretty simple. It's like a windy cable. Pretty flexible. They're going to spin at all uh, angles. And that's right, obviously, drives that. Now, the electronic one. It's done via pulses. This is the other board here, but this goes to your, your RPM. It's like a pulse counter. Goes into a resistor. 47 ohm. IRH, made in Australia. Okay, it's a little... I think it's like a rec uh, um, regulator or something. And there's the taco there. It's like a very crude motor. It moves that. The pulses. Actuate your needle. There's your fuel gauge. There's a little strip there with the white windings that you see on that little rectangle metallic strip. That heats up and actually moves and that uh, bends and moves your needle. And the sender is like a variable resistor and sends power to it the hotter the engine gets. So it's like a variac or um, thermistor. Same with a fuel one. The fuel gauge sender itself has a track with windings on it. As the fuel level goes up, the voltage increases and sends more voltage to this, and that just goes up. Works the same way as a temperature one does. Pretty simple. The old ones work the same way, but are better built. They are old, they got uh, metal pointers instead of these big plastic ones. Bit dusty as a car hasn't had a windscreen in over 10 years. Bush bomb. Let's have a good detailed look at this one. This is from the back. Made by VDO, common, uh, GM Electric Wool Company. I'm not going to pull this apart too much. So if I move this. Whoops. This one here kind of works the same as the um, yeah, Taco does. That motor that you see. There's one of those that actuates um, in this uh, metal part here, the mechanism, actuates a needle. And that, that little motor there spins a uh, gear, goes around, hits a gear at the bottom, which is your, this bottom lead out down here. There. There's another gear at the top, which measures it, cog moves. It'll, um, yeah, it'll chip one of the um, gears. Because these don't run smoothly, these just tick, run in certain um, uh, like pulses. You can see how that works. So be careful not to break it. You see that niche gone past, that's had some heat stress. Uh, uh, plastic wrappers are shrunk a bit and it's bulged a tiny bit too. It's a problem of electronics in cars, the heat, when you park them in the sun, destroys them over time, makes them less reliable. And there's your radiator. There's that motor there, that gear runs on here. There's a more driver circuits there. A bunch of transistors and an integrated circuit. And there's a main motor, a stepping motor that is. The um, VS Commodore one on my ute. That motor actually burnt out. I had to replace it. So they, they run pretty hot those bloody things. It's pretty much like a synchro motor this. Very similar in construction. Now I've got this little thing here back together, which chips your um, lead out and resets it. So when you press that set button, that thing moves back and it disengages the Geneva's between those um, number wheels. And a spring-loaded uh, arm resets those back to zero. And right behind it, you can see it light up. See those Geneva's behind there. I'll probably see if I can get a good view of that with a camera and press the reset button. Get a good support there. I'm going to press the reset button. 
Yeah, the Geneva moves out, the whole four of them, and resets it. So when I move the needle, should be able to see a little motor in there. Perhaps the camera can't pick it up. Goes all the way around. Another internal stop on this one, just goes all the way around. Yeah. That's the main motor that drives the um, odometer. Look carefully. Here's a gear that spins up around, chips the top, hits the bottom in sequence. So, um, yeah, that's why those never run smoothly. They always tick and move in certain steps. When you watch these ones um, work in your car. So, I found that interesting. Thanks for watching.